Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jill Drew, and I'm the general manager of Drew Associates, which is an independent documentary film company that was founded by my late father-in-law in 1960. Uh, I became general manager in 2014 after both my father-in-law, Robert Drew, and his late wife, Andrew, had passed away. And uh, before then, I was a journalist at the Washington Post for many years. So I came from journalism, and uh, actually my late father-in-law also came from journalism. Uh, he got into documentary filmmaking uh, after being a correspondent at Life Magazine, which was a photojournalism magazine here in the States. Uh, one of the most, at the time he worked there, it was the most popular media uh, in, the, in the States. So when, my, uh, when Robert was at Life Magazine, he saw the power of visual images to tell a story. It was a photojournalism magazine and the photographers could get into situations and give the reader a sense of what it was like to be there emotionally in very uh, intense uh, situations. And he felt that, you know, looking at the documentaries of the time, he called them very dull. He said they were like radio with wallpaper. Uh, and he wanted to change that. He couldn't figure out quite how to do that. So he took a year off from his job at Life Magazine and he went to Harvard University on a Neiman Fellowship. And there he studied uh, television, he studied storytelling, he studied the modern novel, and he developed concepts of how to tell stories visually with little to no narration. So very excited, he went back to Life magazine, he got a camera crew together and went out to tell a story, and they absolutely failed because the technology could not support the kind of storytelling he wanted to do. Very cam heavy cameras had to be on tripods to get audio recording. You had to have uh, enough equipment to fill a whole conference table. So he um, had the fortune, and there were other filmmakers at the time, uh, Richard Leacock, uh, Albert Mazels, D.A. Pennybaker, who were starting to work with uh, wind-up cameras uh, that had no sound, to, and seeing the energy that you could get if you were right up close to your subject. So uh, fortunately, uh, Life Magazine had the money and they spent a quarter of a million dollars to cut down the standard 16 millimeter camera of the time to a weight that could be held on someone's shoulder and cut down the audio equipment that you would need to a kind of the size of a large suitcase that somebody could carry, well, a small suitcase that somebody could carry around and a wire that went from the camera to the uh, audio recorder, and then you could actually follow somebody. So literally, the day that that equipment was available and ready to be used, um, Bob and Ricky Leacock got on an airplane and flew to Detro uh, flew to Wisconsin. And the the first story that was ever told with this equipment was the story of John F. Kennedy running for president in the Wisconsin primary against Hubert Humphrey, another Democrat. And that film, the version of which you're gonna see today, uh, was the first film of this new kind of storytelling called American Cinema Verite. So in addition to seeing primary, you're also gonna see another film today called Kenya. Uh, that film is an interesting follow-on to uh, primary. When Primary was, for, was finished, uh, my father-in-law took the film to John Kennedy's Palm Beach home and showed the film to John and his father, Joe Kennedy and Jacqueline Kennedy, and they were stunned by what they saw. No one had ever seen themselves in this way before. And after the film was done, President Kennedy turned to my father-in-law and said, well, what do you wanna do next? And he said, well, I'd love to do a film with you in the White House, you're back against the wall, uh, you know, dealing with a very, very tough issue. And Kennedy said, okay, well, let's first see if you can just come to the White House and do shoot film where I see if I can forget the camera or not. 
So they did a film that you're not going to see today called Adventures on the New Frontier that shows like the inauguration, it shows various meetings in the White House, and one aspect of those meetings is that Kennedy is meeting with his Africa expert, a man named Soapy Williams. I think he was the former governor of uh, uh, Michigan. And it's pretty dull, but uh, so Bob sends Albert Mazels and Ricky Leacock to Kenya on Soapy Williams' first trip to uh, out of the country to some sort of big meeting. And uh, I, the, I heard Ricky tell this story once that um, he and Al were there and the meetings that they were filming were so boring that they had to leave. And they took the camera and they went out. And it was the first election where the Kenyans were going to be electing an all-African parliament. And they filmed that. And what you're going to see today is, is the film that was created. It was kind of like a happy accident um, of just footage that was shot that was going to go in as sort of B-roll to another film. And what you're going to see today is extremely rare. The Kenya film is extremely rare, and it's such a treat that uh, that you are all going to be able to see it. And I really congratulate uh, everyone there for being able to um, present it. So um, I am sitting in uh, our office, and uh, just to remember where I'm at, you know, I have a lot of the different trophies uh, and awards that my late father-in-law and his films and the team that he was with won. Uh, as they were creating uh, American Cinema Verite. Uh, there's, an, there's an Emmy Award, there is the Cannes uh, Awards, um, Venice Film Festival Awards. And I have to say that the European film festivals immediately got what uh, Bob and Al and Ricky and Penny Baker were doing. And they celebrated it. And it took a long time before people in the U.S. Uh, caught up to this revolution.